In this short video, I'm going to describe how to perform co localization analysis using ImagePro protocols. Let's start by considering the coefficients we're going to use to measure co localization. This screenshot is from ImagePro 10, and it's very typical of software packages in that it presents you with a complex suite of different coefficients, all of which mean different things, some of which are valid, and some of which have really been proven to be invalid. And you have to look at this confusing array of numbers and try and decide whether you're looking at co-localized data. In ImagePro 11, using protocols, we're going to use a, simplify, use a simplified set of coefficients, which include Pearson's correlation coefficient, which you see here. This measures correlation with a value of minus one, meaning perfect anti-correlation, zero meaning a random correlation between the two channels, and one meaning a perfect correlation between two channels. Here we see M1T, we're going to use that. So this is um, the total co-localized intensities of channel one over the total intensities of channel one. And we consider intensities to be co-localized if channel one is over its threshold and channel two is over its threshold in that pixel. We also have M2T. So this is the total co-localized intensities of channel two over the total intensities of channel two. And again, we consider channel two to be co-localized if both channel two is over its threshold and channel one is over its threshold. So we're going to do our analysis with just these three coefficients. Pearson's correlation coefficient, M1T and M2T. We're also going to use an interpretive sentence that ImagePro will provide for us. And we'll see more of that shortly. So I'm going to start in the count size tab where I can find the protocols button. And if I open the protocols browser, you can see that the protocols are organized in different collections. And the collection I'm interested in is the Cell Biology Advanced Collection. And I'm going to open the object-based co-localization protocol. So let's load the default protocol. Now I'm going to work on the demonstration image set. So if I click on Load Demo, you can see that the demonstration image loads automatically. Let's take a quick look at this data set. There are two channels, a red and a green channel. And if we look at the objects in the read channel, these are Gaussian shaped objects that start off as their brightest in the top left hand corner and get fainter as we move towards the bottom right. If we look at the second green channel, we see the opposite pattern. We see the brightest object in the bottom right and they get fainter as we move towards the top left. So if we take a look at that in the composite view. You can see we have various different shades of yellow as we mix the two colors. So let's move on and analyze this data set. The first thing I do before executing any protocol is to click on the sync button. By clicking the sync button, I make the protocol aware of the channel names of my currently selected data set. I'm then going to select the appropriate channel for parent, coloc1 and coloc2. Now in this case, I don't require a parent channel, so I don't need a channel in which I'm going to find objects to analyze. For coloc1, I'm going to select the green channel and for coloc2, I'll select the red channel. I'm then going to ensure that the interactive checkbox is selected and click next step. Now in this step, step three, we're going to set the thresholds for each channel. So the threshold is important in co-localization analysis. It means we're going to ignore all of the pixels below the threshold and only analyze those pixels above the threshold. On the right here, we can see a scatter plot. In the scatter plot, we take all of the pixels from the image and we plot them according to their intensity in their green and red channel. So we lose all of the spatial information from the image, but we gain information about the relationships between the two images. Now the default method is to draw a polygon in a region of the background. ImagePro will then calculate the mean intensity of that background and add three standard deviations to it and set the thresholds to those values for each channel. This won't work well on this demonstration data set, which has a background of zero. There are other options available. So I could use the Autobright method or the zero Pearson method. I generally recommend the manual from background method as the most reliable. But for this demonstration data set, which is a bit odd, I'm gonna go for the fourth option, which is to manually set the threshold to one. This means that all intensities one and above will be analyzed. And as you can see from the white area in the image, this means that 
basically all of these six spots will be analyzed for color localization. Because this is synthetic data, I don't have to worry about noise or uh, debris, so I don't have to set the minimum area or worry about a split. I can leave these set to none. I can then hit next step. Here we arrive at the final step of the protocol, the results step. At this step, we can choose options such as whether to automatically generate a report. We can also choose which report template we want to use. And we can also show how we want to display the data collector results. What I'm really interested in now is looking at the actual data in the collector. So let's do that. First, if we look at the measurements results, we see six different measurements, one that corresponds to each of these objects. And we can see for each object, we see Pearson's correlation coefficient is set to one. So each of these objects shows perfect correlation between the two channels. Despite the fact that each of these objects are in different intensity ranges, Pearson's correlation coefficient can cope with that and show that for each object, they get brighter in the same positions and they get darker in the same positions. If we look at the image tab, we see that we have a mean Pearson's correlation coefficient of one, a mean thresholded value of M1 of one, and a mean thresholded value of M2 at one. Now some of these values can be difficult to interpret, but what we do in Image Pro is we very conveniently provide an interpretive sentence. So I'm just gonna undock the data collector here and give myself a bit more space so that we can see exactly what the interpretation is. So what it's telling us here is that there is a mean positive correlation of 0.0999, so effectively one, and that this correlation applies to all of the intensities from image one, so all of the green intensities and 100% of image two intensities, so all of the intensities from image two. So we're seeing really a perfect correlation result here. And we see it described very nicely in the interpretation sentence. It's really important to understand why I chose to do object-based localization analysis to this data set. For comparison, let's see what happens if we repeat the analysis using image-based localization. So I open the protocol browser again and select the image-based protocol. Again, I sync the channels and set the parent channel to none. Call up one to Alexa 488 and call up two to Alexa 647. And we hit the next step button. Get a little warning saying the data collector measurements will be deleted because they're not compatible with the new protocol. That's fine. We'll click OK to that. And I'm going to ensure that I have the same threshold set as I had for the previous protocol. So I'm going to leave them at one and complete the protocol. Now let's take a look at the result we've got. So for Pearson's correlation coefficient, we've got a value of just 0.297. Our M1t and M2t both are still about one. And let's take a quick look at the interpreted sentence. So again, I'm gonna undock the data collector table, make it a little larger so we can see that sentence fully. And you can see that it's saying that there's a positive correlation now of just 0.297 and that it applies to effectively all of the intensities from image one and all of the intensities from image two. In order to understand the difference between object-based and image-based data, it makes sense to understand how Pearson's correlation coefficient is calculated. Let's first look at the numerator. Here we can see that for each pixel over the threshold, we subtract the mean of the red channel from the red intensity, and then we subtract the mean of the green channel from the green intensity and we multiply those values together. In the denominator, we actually calculate the maximum possible value if the data set was perfectly correlated. Let's also take a close look at the scatter plot. And I'm going to enhance the contrast of each point on the scatter plot for clarity. Now, what we're actually seeing here are six different groups of points, each group representing one pair of objects. If I crop out a single point, you can see a single line on the scatter plot. And here's a second point that's been cropped out showing another line. If we consider what having six different relationships to analyze means in terms of calculating Pearson's correlation coefficient, what it means is that having a single mean intensity for red and green is not adequate. We need to have an average intensity for each of the objects. Some of our objects are gonna find themselves a long way from the image average of red and the image average of green 
and so will contribute very negative values to the overall Pearson correlation coefficient. Let's apply this knowledge now to our analysis of a real biological data set. Here I'm showing a data set in which one channel is stained with DAPI and the second channel is stained with histone H2B conjugated to GFP. Now we see only a small number of cells expressing the histone H2B. I can see three substantial objects here and maybe a fourth one here. But notice that the cells are expressing histone H2B at different levels. So each of these cells is going to have a different relationship between DAPI and histone H2B. So we need to consider each of those individually. So let's do that. Again, I'm going to choose to browse protocols and I'm going to choose object based co-localization. Now, as before, I'm going to start by clicking on the sync button so that my protocol becomes aware of the channel names in my data set. In this case, I'm going to set the parent channel to channel two. So I'm only going to analyze the objects that are expressing GFP. And I set coloc one to channel one and coloc two to channel two. And with the interactive checkbox selected, I'm going to hit next step. Now I'm going to set a threshold here that will segment out all of my relevant objects. So a value of 15 works nicely. And I'm going to click OK. And I see my four objects have been segmented out, along with a few very small objects that I'm not interested in analyzing. So let's set the minimum area to 200. And click Apply. And now we see just our four substantial objects for analysis. Now we can hit Next Step. And at this point, I'm going to use the default method of drawing a polygon gone around an area of background. So I can do that. And Image Pro will now calculate the mean intensity of this background region for each channel. And it will add three standard deviations to each of those values. And that's how it's going to set the threshold. So let's do that. And here we can see we have values of 18 and 2 that have been calculated. Now we can hit Next Step. And we get our results. And we have our four objects have been analyzed. And each of them has M1T and M2T of about 1. So the relationship that we calculate will apply to all of the intensities within the four objects. And our correlation coefficient goes from 0.5 up to about 0.76. And if we look at the image table, we can get the interpretive sentence, which is going to be very helpful. Let's give ourselves some space. And here we can see that the mean positive correlation of 0.65 applies to a mean of 100% of image 1 co-localized object intensities and also just about 100% of image 2 co-localized object intensities. So this all in all is representing a good positive correlation. Now let's go on to take a look at what happens if we do the image-based analysis. Again, I'm going to select my protocol browser. I'm going to select the image-based co-localization default protocol. And I'm going to click on Sync. And to match what we did before, I'm going to select channel 2 as my parent. So we only analyze the cells that are expressing GFP. I'm going to set coloc1 to channel 1 and coloc2 to channel 2. And with the interactive checkbox selected, I'm going to hit Next Step. Now here where I'm thresholding out my parent objects, I'm going to set the same value I had for the object-based co-localization, which was 15. So let's say OK. And let's apply, apply the same minimum area of 200. Click on the Apply button, and we see just our four objects of interest. Now we can click Next Step. And at this point, I'm going to enter the thresholds for each channel that I use for object-based. They were calculated as 18 and 2. Let's click OK. And if we hit Next Step, we get our results. So let's undock the data collector and see what we've got. So this time, our correlation coefficient is 0.456. So considerably lower than we had when we did object-based analysis. M1T 
is at 0.7. So that means this relationship applies to just 7% of the DAPI intensities in the whole image. Well, that seems to make some sense, but it applies to 99% of the GFP intensities in the image. So both those numbers seem sensible. And the interpretive sentence says, there is a positive mean correlation of 0.456. The correlation applies to 7.4% of the threshold intensities from image one, and 99.3% of the threshold intensities from image two. So we've still got a positive correlation, but by analyzing objects that are in different relationships in the whole image, we got a lower correlation coefficient. And if we look carefully at the scatter plot, you can actually see that there are more than one cloud of objects in there indicating that we're actually trying to analyze different relationships using a single correlation coefficient. So it makes more sense in this case the way we did it the first time, which is that you analyze object-based color localization. In the interest of completeness, let's run through one more uh, data set in which we're gonna do object-based analysis. So here's another field in which we can see a number of objects which are expressing the stone H2B tagged to GFP. So from the count size tab, let's select the protocols browser and select the object based protocol. Again, I'm gonna select the sync button. I'm gonna set my parent channel to channel two, meaning we're only gonna analyze these objects that are expressing GFP tagged H2B. And I'm gonna set coloc one to channel one and coloc two to channel two. Now we can click on the next step and set a threshold to separate our cells expressing GFP from the background. And I'm going to add a threshold, a size threshold to remove these small objects that I'm not interested in. So at 200, if I apply that. I've now just got my cells and I've got some joined objects here, which I need to separate. I'm going to do this manually by selecting this interactive option which allows me to set, select the split tool and I can apply splits between these joined objects. And I can then select the option to apply the split. And now my cells are separated into individual objects. And we can hit next step. And at this point where I need to set, set uh, the threshold channel one and channel two. I'm going to choose the option to draw a region of background and let Image Pro calculate the thresholds for me. Let's do that. And we have values of 12 and zero set. I'm going to change the zero to a one because I want to make sure that I am excluding background. And let's move on to the next step. And here we can see our results. So we have a several objects in which the correlation coefficient ranges from, it looks like 6.7 up to 8.4. And if you look at our image table, let's undock the data collector so we can get a good view of the interpretive sentence. Just give ourselves a bit more space. And here we can see in, in this case, we have a mean positive correlation of 0.7 and it applies to all of the intensities from uh, channel one and all of the intensities from channel two. So that's a nice result. Now we just beg the question, of course, when should we do image-based analysis? So let's open an image in which I think it makes sense to do image-based analysis. So here in this image, in the third and the fourth channel, we see two apparently co-localized stains. So it looks like they're localized into the same organelles. Now we're looking at a single cell here, so everything should be within the same intensity range. We should be looking at a single relationship that's replicated many times throughout these organelles. So let's run the protocol. So you can open the protocol browser, select image-based co-localization, and click sync. I'm not going to use a parent channel because I want to out analyze just everything over the threshold in channels three and four. And let's set coloc one to the third channel and coloc two to the fourth channel and click next step. And here I'm going to use the manual from background method to calculate my thresholds. So I select a region of backgrounds, click OK, and Image Pro selects an appropriate value for the thresholds. 
And at this point, I can click next step to generate my results. So let's check the numbers and the sentence that we've generated. So here we can see we have a correlation coefficient of 0.65. M1t is 0.75 and M2t is 0.97. So the sentence is, there is a positive mean correlation of 0.654. The correlation applies to 75, sorry, 74.5% of the threshold intensities from image one and to 96% of the threshold intensities from image two. So good result. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please contact Media Cybernetics and we'll be very happy to help.